right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the Orange Peelers studio on camera for Orange Peelers. Zane, how are you, mate? I'm good. I'm in a better mood now. That South, three in a row. Again, on a bit Plus of a roll a now. Buy. Plus a buy. Eight points in four weeks. Yeah, Can't so complain. Starting to get some momentum. Don't know where it was early in the year, but they look interested again. <laughs> are they so. going to play finals? It's an ask, but it, <laughs> it's well, mathematically they can. Oh. Like every, I mean, even the Tigers still could. Like, you know when point, you, but, you know yeah. when you're pulling out the mathematically, that's when the oh, season's not, over. It's still not mathematically. Like they're only five <laughs> points out of the eight. Yeah. Like we just need some of those sides to lose, and then we'll be back in the fight. Yeah. Okay. It's as simple as that. Well, before we get into last week's round of footy, obviously Bulldogs getting a huge win against the Bay <laughs> South, pulling off a very impressive win against in the, the rain. Broncos. Like I said, you don't tip against South in the rain. Why's that? Because do you remember that one time in Perth when we played the Broncos in the rain? Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, Chris Sander put this nice little grubber into the end goal and Reese Wessel was there to save the day. <laughs> I was ready for that sort of try to happen again in the rain against Brisbane because, yeah, but we'll get to that game soon. But it wasn't to be, it wasn't to be. No, it wasn't to be. Yeah, let's, let's talk some origin lineups before we get into the footy. Obviously, the lineups dropped Sunday night and Monday morning, as always. A couple of leaks throughout the weekend. Mm. You get that when it's origin time, but let's go through... Who are we doing first? We'll do the gross Maroon okay. side. All right, I'll just go... I'll read through once again 1-17, to 17, and then we'll talk about the changes, I think, is the best way to do it. So we got Reese Walsh. He's recovering from mm. his HIA. Xavier Coates, Val Holmes, Hammer, Talungi, Tom Dearden, Cherry Evans. Same back line, that's... Was in the last game. Yeah. Cotter, Hunt, Colin, Sewer, Nanai, and Carrigan. That's same all the same. Forwards. And then the bench, I believe, has yeah, has a couple of changes. So Harry Grant, Moe Fodawaka, Felice Kafusi, and Kurt <laughs> um, Kurt Capewell. So Kafusi and Capewell have come in. This year, Capewell. It's a, it's I don't is he even like consistently starting? <laughs> is he? I don't or know. Playing? And then and then the reserves are Gagai, Lukey, and Trent Larero, which is a bit yeah, random. That's a, um, so, obviously, the changes... My question still, Dave for like, <laughs> yeah. How can they not get him in there? Like, they've, they've picked Trent Lerrero. Le- I, I, I'm sorry like, if I'm saying his name wrong. Who would you replace for Fida with? Like, Kurt Capel? Kurt Capel. <laughs> Liero? Just, like, how are they there? Like, they're Luki. fine players. But Even like, like just, Jan- I'd have for Fida over Sewer at the moment. Like, 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 it's <laughs> a strange, strange... Like, fafita has been more consistent than Capel has. Oh, easily. <laughs> I don't know what... As I said, like, we're not even yeah. sure Capel was playing... Like yeah, footy at the of, moment. Let's have a like honestly. Let's. When did the war? Did the Warriors play on the weekend? I think he, would have, he had to have played. I like. I clearly haven't been paying enough attention to Warriors games, but like, if he's playing, I haven't noticed him, have I? Because yeah. I, I forgot he even existed since he left Penrith. Oh no, well, he's he got a Broncos. When he kicked that field goal against the South. Team list Warriors on the weekend. Back, it was lock. Oh no, it was on the reserve. Off the bench. Okay. He's been coming off the bench for the Warriors. He's like set sense. the world a lot, has he? Well, I haven't noticed him. I, I so. forgot he even signed with the Warriors this year. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's kind of just floated by recently. Yeah. So it looks like he's consistently on the bench for him. So very interesting. But he's yeah. is snuck. He, and like to his credit, like he's done well at Origin in the past. I think he's a quality player. But just yeah. when it, when it's ahead of and it, Slater said he's there as the utility instead of Cobo. And like yeah, why well, Cobo's injured as well. He's not. Well, that's he's been, his reason. He's not injured. Yeah. He's being he's being needled. So he's play like he'll play for the. I think Broncos have the buy, but it, like he'd play for them if they didn't have the buy. But he's just being like needled each week, which apparently Slater doesn't like. So yeah, yeah so and then Hopgood's injured. Yes, and so Kafusi's come but in. But still, like I'd have Fafita there and over him. Yeah, I just, what it is. and then Gagai's come in, which I rate because I Gagai picked. You did. Well, game He's one been team. for the Knights this year, one of their better players. And then was Lukey there for game one? No, he wasn't. So Lukey's coming. All right, Lukey. And Trent Liero. Yeah, which uh, just out of Trent, nowhere. Yeah. I mean, he plays for the Storm. <laughs> They're doing well, but he doesn't like. He's been starting lock in the past couple of weeks. What I've noticed with Liero, he's more a decoy runner. Yeah. <laughs> Every time he plays. Yeah, I, I just. Yeah. It's very random. I, guess. I think he random. did make the squad last year, didn't he? Did he? Maybe he did. No, I had him in my predicted squad as a reserve last yeah, okay. year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that's just very random. Like, I can think of multiple Queensland forwards that I'd probably pick ahead yeah. of him. David Fafita being <laughs> one of them. <laughs> um, yeah. As a New South Wales fan, like, I'm glad Fafita's not being picked. Yeah. So, it's weird. Yes. Um, let's go over the New South Wales team. So, you've got Dylan Edwards, Brian Toe, Critter. Troll Mitt Zane. And Lomax. Uh, Lomax, Luai, Moses. So, obviously, the key changes there is Edwards is in back. back for Tedesco. He was which... named for game one. And then Latrell Mitchell's come in for the suspended Sualee'i. And Mitch Moses has come in for 
the disappointing Nico Hines. The disappointing Nico yes. Hines. That's a good way of putting it. And um, so, do you wait, reckon I'll just he, I'll just go yeah. through and then we'll circle back. Sorry. So then there's Jake Trojevic, Reese Robson, Payne Haas, Liam Martin, Angus Crichton. That's all the same. And then Cameron Murray in at lock instead of right in there. young Cameron McInnes, mm. who's dropped out completely. And then on the bench, you got Connor Watson at the 14, who is there instead of Hudson yes. Young. And then the rest of the bench is the same. Yo, oh, Ola Kwatu and Lenu. And then the rest of the squad, Mitch Barnett, Cameron McInnes obviously dropped to reserves. And then Luke Keary holds okay, his 23rd spot. Let's start, Barnett, fair enough. But. Let's start at the top, the back. So talk to me about Edwards. Edwards. Do you think if Blues win, Tedesco stays? Or do you reckon they still would have gone? It's, it, it depends on how good Tedesco played, but I think for New South Wales to win, you assume Tedesco had a good game, and therefore I think he would have stayed, yeah. What do you think? I reckon he would have if they won mm. as well. It's, oh, yeah, but I think Dylan Edwards deserves his shot. Yeah. Like, and that's pretty obvious. Like, well, like yeah. he was named for game one and yeah. then got injured. So, uh, like, I'm I'm picking Edwards every day of the week. And I'm, once again, very excited to see him play in Origin because... We were robbed of that opportunity in game mm. one, so I'm keen for him to play. We got Totler and Critter still there, given Trell comes in. Talk to me about Trell Zane, you're the yeah, Latrell Mitchell expert. I mean, he's been on fire recently. Like, mm. He's in the right head space now. I think I think not, not just him, the whole Rabbitohs have gone confident since getting that win. I think he's got a fire, and he always does in origin. And I mm-hmm. think people even dislike Latrell already to see him go in this game. Well, I'd like to say... When we did our the teams we would pick, we both had Latrell Mitchell at center. Yes. And for good reason because the the issue I don't know if you'd say the issue, but the what the media say, what fans say, usually the scrutiny of Latrell Mitchell at fullback is his laziness and not as a I don't think it's a well, no, thing. Let, let me finish though. Now. So that's that's usually his biggest criticism, his laziness, his unwilling unwillingness to get through work and stuff. The last three South wins, Latrell Mitchell has got through a ton of work. He's been heavily involved. And we've touched on it in the past how Souths, when Latrell Mitchell's doing that, they win games yeah. of football. Let me just add, I don't think it's a positional thing for Latrell Mitchell, him being lazy. Because I remember when he was at the Roosters, he copped a lot of criticism for, mm. criticism for being lazy when he was at centre. If you remember yeah. Origin 19, he made like three runs the entire game. Well, and yeah, got but what I was going to say... At the Roosters, there were games where he made like four runs a game and did nothing at centre. Yeah. And people are like, oh, Roosters and Latrell was a different beast. He was good, but he still had moments where he was lazy. Yeah, well, what like, I was going to say just is... just as consistent as what he is At centre, there's less required of them to do in terms of workload True. and stuff. And that's why I think him at centre... is lazy, though. ...is going to be good. But, yeah, like, you're right. But I feel like he's not going to be playing necessarily at centre. I feel like he's going to roam the field a bit more. See, I feel like I might be Critter the Troming, sort of like Turbo. I reckon when both we saw, of them could. When we saw Critter and Latrol in the centres previously in Origin, especially Have 2021. They in Origin? Yeah. Critter A couple of times. Oh, I, I, I meant, sorry, I meant too. Turbo. Yeah, I meant they Turbo. both roamed. When Turbo and Latrol played together, yeah, there was a lot of roaming and I feel like they might go with that sort of vibe because Critter obviously can play fullback. Like he can play fullback. Latrell so can, can play fullback. I know people like to Bro, say Lat- yes. can. he can. Yes, Latrell Mitchell can play. Latrell Mitchell can play fullback more than Stephen Crichton can play fullback. And that's why I didn't address Latrell. It's like, Latrell can roam. We know what he can do at fullback. And I feel like Stephen Crichton is also capable. And so I'm very excited to have Latrell on my side instead of on the other team for once. Mitch Moses comes in for Nico Hines. I think this is always going to happen, especially mm. after like when we saw Nico Hines last Wednesday. I think I was like, yeah, Moses will be in, regardless of his form. Bro, I deals. think as soon as Mitch Moses played against the Sharks before game one, I think it was obvious Mitch Moses was coming yes. into origin for game two, no matter how. Unless Nico Hines came in and just absolutely dominated. Which didn't happen. But and I feel like Mitch Moses has probably been the first preference outside of Cleary, obviously. Yes. And then I don't think Hines would even be the fourth pref- um, the third preference. I think mm. Adam Reynolds would still be ahead of him. Yeah. With Madge coaching, yeah, at least. That's fair. I mean, I'd with have... Madge coaching I'd have and the Reynolds history he's had with Reynolds, I feel like he would have been no, ahead that's of fair. Hines. But fortunately, he's injured as well. Mm. Oh, so, God. But yeah, so Mitch Moses comes in and I'm very, very happy with that selection. I think mm. Mitchell Moses has been good in the past in origin. Um, even the even his first game where he got torn to shreds in that game three in 2021, he played with a broken back for like 70 minutes and they lost, but he wasn't even that bad. No, he wasn't. I rate Mitch Moses. Um, I'm, yeah, I think we, 
It'll be good. Then we go to the Forge. Jake so Trevorov hits. Everything was the, everything's the yeah, same there. Let's hope he plays more than 20 minutes this time. <laughs> and then, then we got... Go Cameron Murray at lock instead of McInnes. Coming straight into lock, not on the bench after mm. one game. Just slodged straight in there. Maguire obviously had his mind made up probably mm. before even picking the squad to this year that Murray was just going to be his lock. I think, yeah. Given I think he's origin level he has to play lock and he the, played lock game three last year he did and showed why he should he's be the, a lock probably the best lock in the competition well he's Yo's up them. there in club level but I think you know, you know how I feel about Yo I'd in like, state of origin currently yeah. I'd have probably Carrigan at number one but like yeah, Cameron, yeah, you're it's right. definitely top three definitely like, early this year Cameron Murray the only player given it he's all for South every week and he has since the moment he debuted yeah. he made that awesome tackle on I forgot who it was in that game against the Broncos can I give you a hot robbed when Milford dropped the ball and kicked the field goal. Can I give you a hot take as well? And I I don't even know if it's that hot, but I think Cameron Murray, if, I, I wouldn't make him captain now, but if he was available game one, I think he I, should be the captain. I reckon he would have been the captain yeah. if he was available game Obviously, one. Obviously, you're not going to take it off Jake Shruvich after They had game. to give it to Jake for that reason because yeah, he wasn't there. Yeah. But I reckon it would have been Murray as well. And I did sort of expect him, I think in my side, I picked him to come off the bench. Maybe, I don't remember now. It's on Instagram, but... I expected him to come off the bench purely because he's only just come back, but matter, I though. very much like him. He a lot. will. He will probably. Well, well the other. The, the will other he play reason, eighty minutes. I don't know. The other reason I had him on the bench is because I thought McInnes would hold his spot, and I prefer I would have had Ma- McInnes on the bench. I prefer McInnes starting just to get through the work, get through some tackles, and then Murray can go on and really just be an offensive weapon rather than. You know, getting tied in the first because the opening twenty in Origin. No, we'll talk about the bench, explosive. but I still would have had Cameron McInnes on the bench. <laughs> yeah, um, over Isaiah. Yo. Well, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's get to Connor Watson at fourteen. Did not see it coming. I would have expected Matt Burden mm. there, but Connor Watson's been a gun this year. Yeah, like, I don't criticize the selection, but I would have just thought with Burden being in the squad game one. They yeah, would've... it's a weird one because I I heard lots of rumors heading into game one that. Uh, Watson was going to be on the bench and so I expected it and then he got injured so I'm not surprised by the selection but when you look at it in terms of like I just if I ignore the fact that I'd heard rumors that he was going to be on the bench then it does surprise me Um, obviously there was I don't know who started it but there was a little bit of a campaign in game one about Burton being moved to the bench or something Mm. I think there was a few people wanting him on the bench in game one and you just I think a lot of people thought this was the perfect opportunity for the 18th man to become the 14 right especially with the starting center changing the starting half changing um if like if you have a dude that can play center and halves at 18th man for game one and then a half and a center comes out and a bench player you'd think the 18th man goes into one of those spots apparently not and he hasn't even held his 18th man spot mm-hmm. which we will get to we will get to but i like Connor Watson, he's hot. He can play footy. He's been very good this year. He's like he actually has been yeah, quite has. good this year, and I've got nothing against it. Um, so shout out to Connor. I think he's spoken a lot um, publicly in the past as well about you know dreaming of playing Origin. He's one of those players. Obviously, everyone dreams of playing Origin, but I think he's one of those players that was probably in a position where he probably wasn't going to play. Like I think two years ago, if you told me or told told anyone that Connor Watson would be playing Origin. Yeah, it'll You'd be, be like, no yeah, way. Probably not. And so yeah. that's it's special for him as well in but, that yeah, sense. Yeah, three years ago, if you told me Jeremiah and Nana would play Origin, I would have been like... Well, you well, wouldn't have heard of him three yeah, years exactly. ago. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the rest of the bench is the same. Yo, Olaquado and Lenu. You said that you would have had McInnes there. Who would you have had out? Isaiah Yo. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I don't rate him in State of Origin. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Um. And then then we go to the reserves. Barnett. Barnett. I love. I thought he might sneak into the seventeen because he was yeah. very good for the Warriors on the weekend. Um, Matt Burden. This is this is my chance to talk about a bit of a theory I have, Zane. So Matt Burden, not eighteenth man, not in the squad. Do you reckon it's because the dogs maybe pressured Mike McGuire? I, you're not going to pick him. Yeah. Do not pick him. I anymore. honestly reckon that Gus Gould. Has got in the year because obviously he's got association at New South Wales yeah. and he's a big figure in the game. It wouldn't surprise me if Gus Gould has played a role here or just the Bulldogs in general, but like probably Gus. And he's gone. If you're going to pick him at 18th man again, don't pick him because we don't want him to be wasted again. And then Madge is sort of gone. All right, well if you don't want me picking him at 18th man, I'm not putting you in my squad at all, and I'm not complaining. Mm. I'd rather Matt Burden not in the squad at all than at 18th man. And obviously. 
that's selfish of me. We got Matt Burden right here, <laughs> and I do. I feel sorry for Matt Burden as a person because, like, I don't know how he feels about it. He's probably disappointed not to be in the squad, but at the same time, surely he's happy to be allowed to play rugby league. Yeah, <laughs> especially yeah, yeah. With the way the Bulldogs are going and at like, the moment. I oh, think like, he probably want to keep the momentum going. Off for a buy, and then not playing this week, he would have gone three weeks without playing in a key period of the year where we're trying to play finals footy. So I feel like Matt Burden, even himself, can probably see the positives in not being picked at all. And I don't doubt that he, surely he'll be back well, in Oregon point, eventually. We'll but at 18th man, but yeah, we'll surely. Um. Yeah, Mitch Barnett. Obviously, you're a bit of a Mitch Barnett fan as well. Mm. Talk to me about him. Because was he in the I've, squad yeah, game he was. one? Yeah, he was. He was like 20th man, though. But yeah, he rips and tears. He did when he was at the Knights, and he still does at the Warriors. Mm. I, I've had him as a real smoky to get in there, but I just had a feeling he should. I'm but just thinking. I rate him being in the squad more than I did Tevita Pangai Jr. <laughs> which, I just... I don't, yeah. I don't rate having a 4 at 18th man. I know, like, Connor Watson's on the bench. There's not really any... There's not quality center or halves coverage, is there? No. Like, I think Connor Watson I mean, covers Hooker well in the forwards. To. Watson can play in yeah. halves if he has to. Like, yeah, but then yeah. that's like Connor Watson can cover the halves and center if he had to, but why wouldn't you have someone like Scotty Drinkwater at 18th, man? He's on the, or yeah. Gutho. Yeah. Scotty Drinkwater, Gutho, obviously Burden, Nico Hines. Hmm. Like, instead of dropping him, yeah, uh, even Kiri, maybe Kiri will move to 18th man or McInnes. Oh, he's not really Seneca. I'm just trying to think, like, if, let's say Latrell Mitchell goes down. Like Egan, like, well, he's more of a hooker. Yeah, he's a hooker. He's probably. Yeah. But, like, yeah. I just, like, you already have technically four forwards on the bench because Connor Watson can play in the forwards. If Latrell Mitchell gets injured or Stephen Crichton or, like, anyone at the back four, winger or center, let's say Latrell Mitchell goes down. What do New South Wales do? I guess like Connor Watson goes to centre. That would be what happens. And that just that gives me PTSD happen. to what happened to Nico Hines. Oh, what, in Watson Adelaide. can play centre better than what Hines could. He's a better centre than what Hines. I think he's, he's I, probably I, played a lot of games at centre. I just don't understand why wouldn't you just have a centre or you know a Scotty Drinkwater or a Gutho at 18th man? I think Gutho probably makes the most sense to be yeah. honest. I like just like I just don't understand why you wouldn't. So. As an 18th man expert, obviously I think a lot about the 18th man after game one. I think I, yeah, I'd have probably a Gutho. I, I like, I think Gutho plays centers better than Drinkwater and like Connor Watson covers halves. So I'd probably have Gutho 18th man over Mitch Barnett. That's just my opinion though. It worked. Um, and like Luke Keery's still in the squad, <laughs> not Nico Hines. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, I guess that's just. So Nico McGuire, Hines has gone for a you know. Like, he's gone from starting seven. Why doesn't he keep his spot in the squad? And Luke Curry moves down. Do you know what I mean? Want him out, focus on his footy. Like, so if if Mitch Moses or Lua goes down in the week, it's Curry's in. Not properly. Or, and like, not Burden, not Nico. It's like, like, why isn't Burden at 20 instead of Curry when he was 18? I don't know. But, and that's where I'm like, has Gus Gould or the Bulldogs gone, we don't want him 18th man? And so Magic's gone, well, screw you guys. I'm not picking him at all then. It's, it's very interesting. Um, anything else to say on Origin or on the no, team? We've gone saying? over it all. No, it looks yeah. everything I've got off my chest. All I wanted to say about it. But do you want to give Latrell Mitchell any more praises? No, we will soon. We will <laughs> soon when we review, it, uh, review the games. Oh, good segue because we will move on to the games. Um, the round fifteen scores in between man. You, um, you beat me again. The comeback is well yeah, and man, truly it's on. The turning point for the Turn- Rabbitohs and for yeah. myself. So it's now ten to five. Which sounds like a big margin, but it was like 10 to 2 or something. You've gone on a bit of a run, just like South Sydney. Mm, the round 11 turning point. Yeah. Um, was last year, was again this year. <laughs> there you go. Let's go into the games. Sharks, Dolphins, Thursday night footy. I thought this was going to be a blowout the first 20 minutes. Sharks mm. look awful. And then they just fought their way back in. Very unlucky not to win it in the end. Yeah. But the yeah. Dolphins there, people still like just are underestimating them. Like, they're in the top four at the moment. We're past the halfway point of the season. Like, I feel yeah. like they got a tough run coming up, but I feel like they're still going to get the wins they need to the play finals this year. Yeah, no, I think Dolphins will play finals. And, like, you mentioned them being up 22-0. I play touch on a Thursday, and normally it'll run a bit late and I'll get home maybe 10, 20 minutes into this game. And I got home and it was 22-0. And I'd, I, I was the only person that I'd seen that had tipped the Dolphins, aside from one dude in my DMs. I feel bad because I've forgotten his name, but if, you, if you're if watching the podcast, you know who you are. 
this one dude was in he like dm me and he was the only other person i knew that had tipped the dolphins and they were just they were paying like 350 they were no chance of winning the game and i just couldn't work out for the life of me why why weren't they being given a chance? Like, they'd been playing good footy this People year. People just, just don't seem to think the yeah. Dolphins exist still. Yeah, well, like, oh, they're there. like, they've been playing good footy. The Sharks have been inconsistent. Um, I just, I thought the Dolphins, not necessarily did I think they'd come out and lead 22-0, not at all. But I just thought, at the very least, they were a good value option hmm. in terms of, like, they should have been more of a chance. And, yeah, then they take a 22-0 lead, and I felt like an absolute genius. And then the Sharks pull it back in. Score at the death, but Nico Hines yeah. missed, <laughs> missed the goal. Missed Ruined the fourth the goal. That's the only fourth goal he's finish. missed this year, Zane. Yeah. Oh, I know. He just kicked all of them except for that one. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the pressure got to him. Which yeah. I don't blame him. But you could tell as he was lining up the kick that he was rattled. Yeah. And he, he's under pressure. Yeah. He just, like, just his mannerisms and his body language, you could just see that he, there was plenty of head noise and. Yeah, you know, I wasn't well, giving him a no chance. One behind, no one shark supporters behind him was doing that stupid <laughs> finger thing that they normally do. You reckon like, if well, the fans were doing it? Well, why weren't they doing it for? You reckon if they, they, if they do it all the time and that's one time they don't do it, they absolutely shank So it. you reckon if the fans were doing spirit fingers, <laughs> Whatever the kick it is, goes probably, over? Probably, probably yeah. not normally works for him. What do you reckon like... Answer me shark supporters, why weren't anyone behind him doing the little fingers? What do you reckon <laughs> the percentage is? Like, how much weight does that bear on a kick? Say you got... <laughs> Say like let's you gotta ask a shark supporter. Let's talk that. like Nico Hines. He, he's kicking pretty good this year. Let's say he's at eighty percent. Just hypothetically, if he's kicking at eighty percent, that means he's probably got what an eighty. Call it an eighty percent chance of kicking it from that sideline. Just hypothetical, hypothetical numbers. If the Sharks fans behind him do spirit fingers, what does that percentage go to? Like how much? Probably nine times out of ten, they kick it. Do you reckon that it jumps it from an 80% uh, Every to time I've watched the Sharks game, they've kicked the goal after they've done that. Do you reckon it might be 100%? Probably, probably. Maybe Mac, not back in the day when Matt Moylan was but the goal kicker. currently, with Nico probably, Hines, probably. you reckon Nico Hines kicks at 100% when Sharks fans are doing spirit things? I'd, I'd assume so. There you go. So well, he missed the goal when they didn't do it. Like and Sharks was why wasn't it happening? Obviously, a lot of people are blaming Nico Hines for losing the game. Should we be blaming the Sharks fans? Or should we, yeah. For or, not doing spirit things? should we just blame the Sharks in general for... Going, letting the Dolphins go out to a 22 0 lead. <laughs> well, what what do you think had more of an impact on the kick, the 22 point lead or the lack of spirit fingers? Yes, the lack of spirit fingers. Yeah. There and you go. Sharks thought it's your fault you lost this game. Blame yourself, Sharks fans. <laughs> Should have done spirit fingers. Um, what did you make of the Dolphins? They were they started off on fire, but I feel like they were very lucky to win this game in the end. I didn't yeah. think they were good in that. Sharks, enough. yeah. Sharks Hammers try that. saved them in this game. Yeah. If Hammond didn't score that full length try, they lose this What game. a try. It was a great a try moment. that I don't think they win that because the Sharks were coming for him at yeah, that Yeah, it, it swung the momentum completely and it was a phenomenal piece of play. Ben Barbaresque, <laughs> yeah. I reckon. Greg Inglis. Greg Inglis, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, outstanding try. Great stuff. And then the Sharks, obviously a, a slow start, but the last 60, they won by quite a bit. What did you make of the Sharkies? They were good. It's just that first 20 costed them. Mm. Yeah, you can't do that against like a Panthers or a against Storm anyone really in the current or a Bronco point. when they're at their best. Yeah, but they did well to fight back into this game, and you know they've lost three of their last four. Is it? Um, yeah, or two. Yeah, three. They two lost Panthers, three. Eels. They won Brisbane, and they've lost. So they've lost three yeah. of their last four. So a little bit of a fade yeah. off happened to the Sharks recently. And that's why but I, like, I still what, think why aren't the Dolphins being given a chance? Like? Yeah. Like they're the top four. Yeah. They're top four. At the it point. was fourth first first. Yeah. I, yeah. I, like, let's stop sleeping on the Dolphins just because they're new. They're coached by the greatest coach of all time. They've, they're performing with multiple players out injured, like marquee signings. You've got Tom Gilbert out injured. You've got Thomas Flegler, both out injured for the season. They're marquee signings, and they're still playing good footy, and people just weren't giving them a chance to beat the Sharks who had being inconsistent, everyone says Sharks can't be top eight teams. But then they come up against a top four team and everyone's like, nah, Sharks win. Hmm. I just and they lose. Like, give the Dolphins some respect, please. Uh, Raiders, I'm, I'm going to move on. You having to move on? Yeah, we'll move on. I did not watch this game, so you're going to have to do talking for I me. saw the first half um, and then I was on a train and missed the second half um, doing some sneaky business in Sydney. Um, but the Cowboys were just completely dominant, to be honest. Um, 
Mm. It was it's just the Raiders. If they don't yeah. show up, they get pumped. It was it was because like it was in Canberra, and so I actually expected the opposite. I thought Raiders would dominate just because usually Cowboys don't play that good outside of North Queensland, and usually Raiders play quite good at home. And to start the game, Raiders were you know they crossed the line a couple of times and dropped it or had tries disallowed by the bunker. And then as soon as the Cowboys got a chance to score, bang, try. And then as soon as they got another chance to score, bang, try. And just defensively, the Raiders sort of fell apart and Cowboys, yeah, just executed really well and just ended up having a bit of a field day with it. I think there was a late push from the Raiders in the second half from what I saw, but the Cowboys were just the better team. It was like 34 to 10 at some point. So I think it was just... (laughs) Yeah. Some consolation trials at the yeah. end of the game. Oh, hundred percent they were consolation trials, hundred yeah. percent. But it was just yeah, very, very dominant from the Cowboys. And one of those games where you go, um, oh wow, Cowboys. maybe they are a finals contender. <laughs> I think they're like a side they could sneak in, they might just miss it, you know, they yeah. kind of just things will have to go their way. Similar yeah. to like what like who should I compare them to? Like maybe to like you know, twenty twenty one, like the Titans, like, you know, they kind of <laughs> mm. thereabouts but just need things to go their way. I feel yeah. like that could happen with the Cowboys this year. It, it was play finals can definitely see him missing it, but I think before this game they were in a position where people were like, "Yeah, they they should be in the mix for finals." But, but are against they? is pretty good. Yeah, this game you helps. Know, they're kind of they're, they're not in the A. I think they're just sort of lurking outside of it a bit. But yeah, they, they're going okay. They've got parts of their games they need to fix up still. I think their defense. This game was just really important for them to have a performance like this, where it makes you go, okay. Yeah, the Cowboys instead of being like. Are they in the mix? You go, they are in the mix. Yes, I think are. it was it was a very good win from them. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes from <clears throat> Raiders. Especially, on the other hand, just what you expect. Like they'll either come out, get you in a grind, and win in a close one, or they'll just not show up, get destroyed, get belted, yeah. and then Ricky Stewart has a cry. This is probably the sort of performance I expected more from the Raiders this year, to be honest. Yeah, especially without Fogarty at the moment. Like I expected them to not be. I, mean, like I said, top I said someone moment. said to me early in the year, the Raiders as the year goes on will just fade off. Mm. And like it kind of looks like it could happen, especially with the quality of teams around them. Like you watch them come out and have a good win this week. But the Raiders like. are on eighteen points. The Roosters are on eighteen. The Bulldogs are on eighteen. Manly are on seventeen, and then Broncos, Cowboys, Dragons, and even Warriors are like all around the Raiders. And a lot of those teams you'd expect to make the finals before the Raiders, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Cap Broncos, Cowboys, Warriors. I would not the Dragons, but Manly. Manly, yeah, as well. Oh, like, Dragons are doing all right. They are, but I, yeah. And then, I, like, I Bulldogs and Roosters as well. Like, yeah, I think Raiders, it could be a costly loss. It's against, like, you got to win. I, I say this all the time, and I can't stress enough. When you're in the position, when you're in that 6th to 10th, 12th spot, you got to beat the teams around you. They're the important games. It's beating The Raiders beating the Cowboys on the weekend, in my, in my opinion, is a more important game than Panthers. Like, you'd rather beat the Cowboys than you would the Panthers because most teams lose to the Panthers. It's not a two points that... that although you could argue, like, it's... Because most teams don't beat them, it's a bonus two points. But if you beat the Cowboys, you're getting two points and you're taking two points off a team that's around you. And so it's, yeah. it's essentially a four-point win. Exactly. They're and important wins. Yeah, just, when South played the Raiders last year, it costed us in the end yeah. when we lost to them. Yeah, so there you go. They finished 13 wins, 11 losses. South were 12-12. <laughs> Our yeah, Florida against us, if we had won that game, we would have been in the eight. And that's they you, you got to you, shows every game matters, even yeah. if it's in the middle of Origin and you're going to yeah. rush your players. Yeah, you, you, you just got to beat the teams around that game. game. Speaking of South, Zane. Speaking of South, needing to win games, they won on the weekend. And they dominate. I don't Talk think the me. score line sums up how like dominant South were actually in this game. But they won twenty-two to twelve. I think Broncos were robbed. You think they'll rob yep. you? No. <laughs> no, no, but I'm would you agree with me that the scoreline doesn't sum up like how dominate like Yeah, like Broncos in this game? Broncos scored two Bronco, late Broncos tries. were awful. Oh, like, I'll tell you that. Ones. Was yeah. Pretty pretty bad in this game. Yeah, and they were the week but, before as well. Yeah. But how so like, I don't know where this was early in the year, but they it's reminiscent of how they were playing early last year. Mm. Like the way they're attacking, it's just so fluent, right? Yeah. Now. Like it's the, even the defence is what I'm impressed with at the moment. I think Wyden moving into the halves is really helpful. Yeah. And Tane Milne playing center is a big improvement for him because now he can't jam <laughs> yeah. like he used to. He's a lot better at the centers. But the defense is what I'm impressed with. Mm. Like, we're not, like, you know, winning games like we did against Power, like 40 to 26 or whatever it was. Yeah. Like, we've conceded 12 points over the last two weeks. Yeah. 
when the Broncos made that break and Ezra Mam thought he was just going to catch the ball and run away. And he, I could see in his face he thought he was away. He didn't see Jacob Gagai lurking right behind him. I watched the way the South players communicated with each other on that break. Yeah. Uh, they talked to each other so perfectly to shut that down. And it was very different to the last time they played, I think it was Broncos, where yeah, the where 20 just, tap and nobody even... No, that was Pen- Penrith. Like, against Penrith yeah, and just nobody cared. Last time we played the exact Brisbane, opposite. Well, we were worried that was going to happen again, that 20 tap when we yeah. kicked it dead. But we were watching the players. Everyone in the bar was blowing up at them. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Wyden was like yelling at them to get but back that's what I mean. That, like, that, that's, that is a difference. That is a change in culture. They look, they look more energetic. Yeah. They're not lazy. They're not like walking. They're not laying on the floor after a loss. Like they're all up yeah. and they're all ready to go. It's good. It, <laughs> it know, might be too little too late, but it it's good. Be, it's promising. Never say never. I think South, yeah, all the teams on the bottom four are the most capable of doing oh, it. Oh, comfortably. Almost, Parramatta yeah. probably... Potential nah. too, but I think nah. yeah, they need to they need to win those last two games. But no, hundred percent. I think like eat like comfortably. South out of they're only five points out the eight. Like out of like even no. out of the bottom five teams. Like I think yeah, no, like they can take don't over rule the them out. They can don't, take over the dragons. Like, don't rule them out. They they're in a very they've made it hard for themselves. They're in a very tough position to try and play finals, but as you said, what they're five points outside of the eight. Losses, like, so. Never say never. They ha- like they have you to. You tend to finish eighth. Most teams that finish eighth tend to have about twelve losses. You want tends you, to be about twelve you wins, be, twelve losses. You want to be above fifty percent. Yeah, it tends to so be around be twelve wins, twelve losses. You know, thirteen wins, eleven losses around there. So you want to be yeah thirteen. They can't really afford to lose any more than like two or three more games. So what? Are, so you yeah. So you get twelve and twelve. So let's look at their draw. Yeah. So they let's look at their draw to get to thirteen wins. They can only lose two more games. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. They can definitely. I think with how close it is, like it could end up being like at eleven to thirteen. No, nah, you even when but, it's close, it go it goes the other way. Usually, when it's close, it means you have to get fourteen. Like some sides made it with like fourteen wins or yeah, something. Yeah, that's um, like, fourteen losses. Usually, when it's a close comp, you have to win more. Not. It's not that yeah. you can lose more. It's usually like, Rabbitohs, like last year, I think you had to win four. So the Rabbitohs draw, they play Manly. They got a bye and they play Parramatta. The Dolphins play the Tigers. The Raiders down there, they play the Sharks. The Storm at Accor. Tigers, Knights, Panthers, Roosters. Yeah. So it would be an ask, but... Last year... They last, need to at least win two of those games against those top Last sides. year, eighth had 13 wins and the year before they had 14 wins. Yeah. So you usually you want to be above the fifty percent win rate, yeah. which means you want thirteen wins, maybe four. To, like fourteen probably locks you in. Thirteen you probably sneak in. Yeah. And Souths are on four with how many games left? The Do yeah. the math. I think South eleven have, or twelve. I think South have ten games to go. They've played thirteen, so they have eleven games left. Yeah. So yeah, they need seven wins. No, no nine yeah, wins. Nine wins. Nine wins in eleven games. It's doable, but it'll come down to attitude as well if they really want it. Like, if they're going to be determined to yeah. prove everyone wrong. But I I don't think they're going to get the wooden spoon anymore. Yeah. I think a lot of people have yeah, come no, to that I, agree. Yeah, they're no. not going to get the spoon. But they can certainly push for at least, you know, 10th place, 9th place, yeah. 11th place, like somewhere around there. Yeah. Hopefully 8th, 7th or 8th. They're, they're almost pushing. in the same position as Roosters were last year. Funnily enough, I'm gonna look at where the Roosters were. Because like Roosters were Let's... bottom four, and they had, they got to a point where they had to win every single game. I'm gonna look and at they did. So what round is it now? Uh, we're heading into round 16. Round 16, so round 15 ladder last year. The Roosters were six wins, seven losses. So they actually weren't. They were 16 points. South of 12. So they were yeah. yeah they were in a better position. But what the Cowboys were 14. South were on 12. That's where the Bulldogs were last year. Five wins, nine losses. Mm. So they're in a position, this position they're in now is where the Bulldogs were. Well, we, we had five wins, so we're even a win more than South South right now. <laughs> yeah. We're in a better well, position. How much games did they win last year? Dogs, yeah. seven, seven. Yeah, I well, think. And we, and I think we South, South, South are going to finish more, with more than seven wins this year, but... Yeah, never say know. never, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. How, I, I just like sitting here and looking at the ladder. Bulldogs in sick. It just it just yeah. looks right. It doesn't, doesn't look it? normal, does it? It just looks right. It doesn't look normal. We're playing for a top four spot this weekend. It's just sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows everywhere. <laughs> uh, do you have anything else to say about Souths? It's, I'm being impressed by them. Mm-hmm. Being impressed, like when they beat Gold Coast, like you know people are coming out saying, "Oh, it's only Gold Coast. Let's see what they can do against Brisbane." No, they proved it to me. Yeah, they're the real deal now. I wouldn't take them lightly anymore if you're playing them. I know they're down the bottom, but the way they're playing, they can. Yeah. 
they can upset teams. Yeah. Um, let's move on, shall we? You happy to move on, or do you want, yeah. do you want to oh, give them any more flowers? Go past this game. Tigers, honestly, game. I, I didn't even watch it. So no, if you want to, so <laughs> next up we got the Tigers and the Times, which can only be described as a blockbuster between two pretty rubbish sides who played both played pretty rubbish, and the Tigers <laughs> were the lucky team they got the game, the win. Yeah, I think. Happy Coruscant was the difference. Yeah, he was outstanding. He, but apart from that, the Tigers like they would have lost. To he a lot. was. They would have lost to a lot of other sides. Yeah, hundred percent. But they weren't good. I thought Happy Coruscant almost played himself into Origin. He was very good, but not a good game of rugby league. In the second half, nine line breaks. Tigers at two. And the Titans did not score. A point. Well, like the Titans led ten six, I think, and Des then Haslow lost. Was fuming. Eighteen at the ten. Press conference. If you didn't see it, he was fuming. He was so but, yeah. He was so disappointed with how they played in this game. I just like I didn't I didn't watch the game, but usually like this this will almost sum up the game perfectly. Normally, if I miss a game, I'll go back and at the very least I'll watch the mini. At the yeah. very least, <laughs> you couldn't. Sometimes I watch the whole game, but usually the mini I did not even bother. Yeah. I didn't even. There's watch the no point. Lines. It I'm was like, a, nah. it was a snooze fest. Yeah. It was a boring game. I know Tigers supporters are going to be like, oh, it was outstanding winning yeah. that Leichhardt. I'm like, nah, good yeah, on for him, you guys, yeah. but. As a neutral fan trying to watch the game, it was yeah, a pretty and, but poor sh- game. And shout out to the Tigers fans getting a win at Leichhardt. That's awesome, and I'm happy for you guys. And enjoy the win because obviously as Tigers fans, they're in last. They're now not in last, so Probably, happy days yeah, for them. I but think you know, that game was going to be one of those sides will be the wooden spoon. Yeah, it you? was a spoon bowl for mm. sure. I think it's probably out of those two and maybe... You put power in the mix. I feel but like with Gold Mitch Coast Moses have shown a lot more than what the Tigers have, though. But then the Tigers beat them. See, yeah, but it's, it's an interesting and one. And the Tigers were missing everyone. I remember your tips Gold came Coast in. were missing a lot. No, t- Gold Coast, yeah, no Fafita, no Tino, no Brimson. <laughs> no, they're missing a lot as well. But When you sent in your tip and I saw that you'd tip Tigers, I thought you'd misspelled Titans. <laughs> well, I was like, there's no yeah, way. Like, hey, Tino, have you no not seen the either. lineups? No. Yeah, but like... It just it was a, yeah not a good game a, of footy. Yeah, just let's not much after say. Let's travel over whatever. to New Zealand, Zane. Talk to me about the I Warriors. Kept the and Warriors the for an upset here. Yeah, they kept sneaking back into the league lead occasion. Leave that the Storm just too strong for him in the end. Yeah, and came home very strong with Storm. Um, yeah, I think over in New Zealand, they're hard to beat. There, the Warriors, and I tipped the Storm. Usually, my rule is never tip against the Warriors in New Zealand, but I thought, you know, the Storm a little bit slept on at the moment, but. It was very back and forth for the first, I guess, the first half. And then, yeah, Storm in the second half particularly just sort of ran away with it. And they weren't flogging them, but they just, yeah, they were, the, they were on top for the whole second half. They were. If, like, I mean, no, Warriors took the league early, <coughs> early in the second half. Yeah, did. but then after that, Storm just came home strong. They did, yeah. And then scored, uh, Fala Longo scored that try at the very end that just um, was the final nail in the coffin. Uh, would you have any standout players in this game? Far long though. Yeah. Really good game. Unfortunately, he didn't make my five or three to ones. Wow. Him, Mitch Barnett for the Warriors was monstrous. Yeah, he was the fantastic. He, how hard he ran. Like, yeah. He just played his way back into that origin squad, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have I, like I don't really have anything to say here. To yeah. It was like a, I think it was expected. I didn't think it'd be this high scoring. Yeah. Tell you that much, but I think the Warriors. Yes, you, you still can't sleep on them. I feel like they. Playing a lot better than what they were early in the Yeah, it year. was another game where the Warriors have lost, but you come out of the game thinking, oh, they're, they're the real good. deal. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. But at the same time, eventually, they're going to have to start winning. <laughs> you mm. can't just be all season be losing games but looking good. you got to look good and win because they're currently 12th. They're six wins. Like, they're, they're only a win outside of the top eight. But got good for and against as well. Yeah, it's just... Like, they've got a car. I think they've got two buys to come, but... You, they you have, gotta start they have the round 27 buy as well. Yeah, okay. That that could mm-hmm. be big. But yeah, I just think... And like, I I do think they will start winning more games, but they they need to start winning mm, more games. They do. Uh, it was Roosters. So, there was a sin bin <coughs> early in the game, which I thought was oh, a can we, off. We need to go. We need to go right back. South Broncos. Let's jump back. Oh, yes. Let's talk about... So I can't believe we missed it. We can edit this too. No, nah, I'm not even going to edit it. Just, oh, okay, we won't. So if, you've, if, if you're a South fan or a Broncos fan, you're rewarded for continuing to listen. We're going to talk more about your game. So Jordan Ricky gets sin binned. Latrell Mitchell gets sin binned. How is he not sent off? Latrell? No, Ricky. Contact to <laughs> yeah. the head. Off. No he, excuses. Let's, let's compare it to the Suali'i one. So Suali'i in origin, 
was sent off because it was high, it was late, and it was forceful. Ricky. Ricky, high, Capital forceful. Without the ball. But it wasn't late, it was without the ball. Yeah. And so when you compare it to the Suwali one, in my opinion, the Suwali one was higher and more forceful. But this one was completely off the ball, which in my opinion makes them just as bad as each other. And if the Suli one is a send-off in origin, this is a send-off in a regular season game at the very Absolutely. least. Absolutely. Like I just I could not believe he wasn't sent off. Mm. The one thing I can say is you gotta hope Adam G's not refing your origin mm. because he has an out for Latrell for whatever reason. <laughs> like the second time in three weeks he's sin binned in for no reason. First was the hip drop against Parramatta, which nothing in it. Yeah. And then there's this. Yeah. So no, no. Latrell Mitchell deserved to be sin binned. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He escalated. Do you reckon it. if it was any other player, if it wasn't Latrell, they would have been sin binned? Yes, Reed might have got sin binned for that. I every don't week. think so. He I, escalated it. He wasn't the first player in. Yeah, but it's he wasn't sin binned for being the first everyone player in. He was sin binned for escalating. Had already it. started running in by the time he. But it hadn't been there. escalated. Latrell oh. Mitchell came in and like basically tackled the bloke. Yeah, you but can't do that. Broncos and Southways were already running in by that point. You can't like do what like Latrell did. He escalated him and it. Then they ran in. They were already but running in. But Latrell Mitchell escalated it. I, I, a difference I between, don't think it was escalating. There's a difference between being third man in and escalating. He wasn't sin bin for being third man in. He was sin bin for escalating it because he came in and shoulder charged a bloke. You can't do that. Yeah, he needs to get it out of his game. Taking out our skipper. He needs How to get it out he, of the game. Like, taking out our skipper. That's How the ref's he? job to deal with that. And the ref failed to deal with it correctly, but that like... Yeah, Adam G is really... I rough, will say, like, I think Latrell Mitchell deserved to be sin bin, but it is a joke that he got the same punishment as Jordan Ricky. Yes. Because what Latrell Mitchell did was not as nearly as bad as what Jordan Ricky did. Yeah, I, then, like, I was ready for Kevin Walters to come out and defend this after the yeah. he made during the week, and he yeah. knew he looked so stupid yeah. if he tried to, so he just yeah. kind of copped it on the chin and just said, uh, yes. yeah, he should have been Speaking sent. of sin bins, let's... Go back to the Eels Roosters game. What were you going to say about that, Sydney? A drop, like spear tackle. Yeah. A few years ago, Carl Lawton got sent off yeah. for that's doing all, that same tackle. That's always been Murray. a send off. Always. Why was he not sent off? Well, he should have been sent he off. Should and have been. He's disputing the charge. Have you seen that? Yes. So Kelvin Cleary got me. sent off for doing yeah, it. That that's same what I mean. Year, it's but... always been a send off. That has always been a send off. And then not only. So he got Sinbin. And now he's challenging the decision of four yeah, weeks. Because should have been sent off. Like, and Roosters, he's saying he should have been punished less. He should have been punished more. Roosters got two quick tries in that section, yeah. which technically won them the game. Yeah, no, it flipped the game. Parramatta completely. fought back and took the lead at one point, but Roosters just too strong. Yeah, that yeah, that's the tale of that game. It was very much a end to end game of like it was. It was tight. Both teams were in it. It was a good game of rugby league, and then Kelma to Alungi. Gets Sinbin and yeah, Roosters just completely exposed it, as you said. And that gave them a heap of momentum and they just carried that momentum to the finish line and yeah, came home. I just like I just can't get over the fact that not only was he not sent off, he then is trying to claim that, you know, he shouldn't have been punished as much. And then Kelma Tulung again, the Roosters got penalized for a high tackle that didn't even go near his head. Did you see that? Uh, Where the Roosters baby. player tackles him like around the chest and Kelma goes like and flings his head back yeah. to milk eye tackle and got the penalty. He didn't get touched oh, on the head. It was insane. How he would have oh, it that was that insane. Yeah. Like just the amount of calls that went against the Roosters to like towards Parramatta, and then like the score still ended up what it is. Shout out to him because uh, like Kelma Tolongi playing terrible. How much like how much is Kelma like, Tolongi paying the refs? It's that, too hard. Parramatta aren't decisions. playing terrible at the moment. Yeah, they're, they're not, not winning. And like, like yeah. you know, they're at the bottom of the table. They need yeah. to be winning. Like they can't just be like fighting in games. Like they should have beat the Bulldogs. Yeah, the they should have won that game. But they yeah, they've, they've been struggling they to close out games. They they were winning by eight against the Bulldogs with fifteen minutes left, and Bulldogs had a man in the sin bin as well. And then on the weekend they were up by two with twenty minutes left, and they lost both of those games. They they're not icing games. They're not yeah. closing out games. And as good as Mitch Moses they is. Week, they have the bye. Then they play. Then the week after they play. They play the Knights. Should That's win. they. And then after that play. they play South. There you go. So. And that that game, by the way, Campbell Graham's return. Yeah. It's Parramatta. It's, so that'll be exciting. The South fans, and Parramatta are in returns. the same position as Souths, where if they want to play finals footy, they have to win nine. I well, know they're, out of they're a win behind. Oh, because they've yeah, true. Because they've had um, the extra bye, or they're missing a bye or something. Yeah. But they've, I think it's the same because they've had a buy. They've they've won four games, so it's the same. They've got to, oh, but they play less. 
is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So they got to win nine from ten to get to thirteen yeah. wins. Yeah. Yeah. I get we. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that they is tough. Lose. Tough for the Eels. <laughs> they can lose. Hey, they can lose one game. Um, yeah. I just. I like. Obviously, I don't think they're playing finals footy this year. If Mitch Moses and Guthrie went back, I'd have them for the spoon. If they lost that game by more, they would be on the spoon. Yeah, they they're, would, they're, yeah. they're they're only like, like they're equal last. They're only ten points ahead of the Titans on four and against. So it's tough times for the Eels. But yeah, I'd, like I don't know what else to say. It's just not yeah. not their year. Not their year. Well, let's get to the Sunday games. Mm-hmm. First one I didn't watch because I was out distracted doing something. But you were there. I was at there Brookie. at Brookie. Tell Hate us about it. it. Um, I'll tell you what. As much as I hate Brook Fowl Oval, great afternoon for some rugby league. Like really, really nice conditions. Sun, like nothing beats a sunny Sunday Arvo game at a suburban ground. Um, and it was a very gutsy win from the Manly Seagulls. They finished the game, and for a big chunk late in the second half, they had no bench. They had nobody on the bench. Ruben Garrick probably sums up the Manly injury woes. He got a HIA, came off, passed his HIA, went back on, got another head knock, yeah. came straight back off. Shocking. Like just so unfortunate. But despite that, and despite all the other injuries, Manly not only won, but they dominated. They dominated. Yeah. They dominated. And Manly are a very like underrated side as well, I think, this year. Mm. Like, yeah, they're not like consistent, but like, that's their worry. They're inconsistent. Yeah. But like they're lurking around the eight, and they're probably one of the better sides that are in that, you know, sort of area fighting for the eight. Yeah, and like Tom Trevojevic comes back yeah. soon. Like, yeah, they only just lost to the Broncos at Magic Round by one mm. point. I wouldn't be only surprised if they lost. play finals at all. Like oh, they're yeah, an eight no, yeah, I, think they I think they'll play finals. Yeah. I like like you'd think Broncos come in, just like looking at the ladder. Like I think Roosters will make it, I think Bulldogs. Well, like at the current ladder, I think you swap Broncos and Raiders. Yeah. And that's probably oh Warriors surely they maybe they've left it too late. Yeah. I don't know. But yes. mm, uh, maybe not. On, surely, but, surely. <laughs> but yeah, no, on this game, I like Manly just very much the better team despite not having a bench. It was just such a gutsy win. The Trevojevic brothers were the standouts. Jake and Ben both had cracking games. Um, and Daly Cherry Evans, just yeah, to like do what he did with no bench and just to get the team around the park and lead them to the win was big. The Dragons, they weren't necessarily... Oh, I get, like, they were bad, but it, it wasn't just, like a horrible 80 minutes or anything. It was just some bad so moments. They will have a good win and then they'll have a pretty yeah. shocking loss and just, yeah. that's just their, been their season. They just, yeah, they just had some yeah bad moments or a bounce to go against them or... or there was a, you know, one or two calls where, like, Graham Mannersley said one of the Manly tries shouldn't have been a try, and that was early, which you can argue momentum. But, like, Manly, despite not having a bench, bet they were the better team and got a very good win. I'll tell you what, like, Manly at Brookie on a Sunday or Saturday afternoon are almost unbeatable. Mm. They're always so good when it's an afternoon game on the weekend. And it was a, it was their fifth sellout of the year as well. Yeah, they're so big shout out crowds, to aren't they, Manly? Yeah. I respect it. Especially like they're only lurking around the bottom of the eight. It's not like they're setting the world on fire. No Tom Trojevich and they're still selling out. I respect it. And then this game, Zane, you saw I, it and I didn't. I saw parts of you it. You saw parts of it. I didn't see it. the I, whole thing. I haven't seen I any of like it. like 20 minutes. So t- yeah, tell me about it. It was a Jerome Lewis and Dylan Edwards terrorizer. But the Knights did well to fight back in because the Penrith were out for a pretty hefty lead. I heard Edwards had like a pretty average game until towards I, the end. Oh, I just love Dylan Edwards. Yeah. So I might be biased for, in that statement. Yeah, I, I'd heard that he'd... Like I, I saw people this, saying he'd almost played himself. I thought out this of game all. would be a bit more of a blowout than what it was. Yeah, the Knights did well to fight back into this game, and they did it against the Storm as well. Like yeah, they're not playing terrible. They're not winning, and I don't really rate their side in general. I think they're probably going to be bottom of the ladder by the end of the year. They'll be bottom four. Yeah, Penrith did what they had to do to win, and what I saw from this game, I'm like, just they looking, were the best side. Edwards starts. Yeah, he. Like he didn't have any line breaks or line break assists or try assists or anything. He had his try, though. He had a try. He did enough. But I heard Luai was sensational. He was great. Especially towards the he end. He always seems to have these blinder of a game <laughs> every time the Origin sides get started, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Every time. He turns into prime Joey Johns when an Origin team yeah. needs to be picked. Did not... So they led after the first try. Did they have a lead again? Did they lead? No. I'm just looking at the minutes of the tries. It no, doesn't look didn't. like it. But they got to try early, and then Penrith sort of got momentum and got a few over him. Yeah, but yeah, like obviously, I don't have anything to say because I didn't say. Do you have anything else to say? No, not really. I saw like a brief period of this game. And I, yeah, like, I just didn't really like get into it. It's like because I kind of expected. It's Penrith just it's win. just what you expect. 
but just yeah. a solid win by Panthers. Knights put up a fight in Newcastle, but Panthers were the better team, it looks like, for the whole game. I guess we shall do our 5 4 3 2 1. We should. We shall. We shall. So I start, you yeah. believe, my yeah. 5 4 3 2 1s for the week. I can get my notes up. Oh, and Bulldogs Bulldogs destroyed the bye, by yeah, the way. Did, 100 yeah. nil. One point. I kind of don't really reckon he deserves one point. I think he deserves more. Daily Cherry Evans. Yep. Two points, Jerome Law. Three points, Hamiso. Might should probably switch him down, but a bit late now. But that trial is just incredible. Yep. Four points, Appy. Yep. And then five points is Trell Mitt. I just being completely. Simping, wait, go, you're going to have to go again just so I can type it because I was not typing it. Cherry Evans on one. Yep. Luai on two. Yep. Hamiso on three. Yep. Appy on four. And Trell Mitt on Trell five. Mitt, sorry. That was my bad. Um, Trell Mitt on five. My one. So I've gone Hammer with one point. Purely because of his sick yeah. try. Appy got two points. I've got Far Lungo okay. on three. He was very good. I've gone Angus Crichton with four points. I thought he was really good for the Roosters. And yeah, Troll Mitt. I thought he's the best player this week, which means Finally, he collects the bonus too. I've been waiting for this moment. You said that when he gets the you know some points, you'd wear the Latrell Mitchell oh, vintage thread shirt. Yeah, so will. unzip your jacket. Yeah. Let's see it. Oh, it's not on at the moment. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Come on, mate. Yeah, we're but... trying to trying to give it. Give some credit to the vintage thread trying to show off the shirts but and you didn't even wear speaking it. Speaking of, I think the vintage thread needs to help me out with some merchandise here. Yeah. Because we've got some new. We've got a new segment this week. Try of the week. Try of the week, but not just any try of the week. Winston, allow me to introduce you, named after a very special man. Yeah. <laughs> to our badly made t shirt. I need the vintage thread's help here. To our oh, that's horrible. No, it's taped on. on. Yeah, it's taped, taped on. on. I, I need vintage thread. I need you to help me. <laughs> How do you like it? Our new. Reese Wester in the wet. Try of the week. It's like the colouring of the photo is so oh, bad. I'm sorry, as well. I'm sorry, it's a bad print of that. What did you make that on? It's cheaply made. No, but the, like I'm just looking at like even just the design. Like, don't you have Canva? <laughs> no, it's on Picolage. <laughs> you used That's Picolage. A, yes, I did. It was very cheap. Finish run, I need your help. We All need right. to get this merchandise up and running. The but... vintage thread, please. Can we get yes. a Reese Wester in the wet t shirt? Try of the week. Tell you what. Let's make it a weekly segment. Yes. Try of the week, that? a weekly segment. Yes, our Reese Wester in the week. Thanks to your horrible the taped on t shirt, <laughs> the vintage thread. Please get Zane a, sh- a shirt and you can sponsor the segment. Uh, how about that? How about that? About our Reese Wester in the wet, try of the week. Yep. Goes to Hamiso Tavio Fido. Reese. I've got to very, type this out. But Kyle Felt was very far, close behind him. With that yeah. magnificent try in the corner. So how about I cover up my I'll terrible, tell you what, terribly I, made t-shirt. I yeah. wish that the NRL didn't copyright block like Instagram videos of like NRL because I'd love to do a post every week of our try of the week and call it. So you, it's called, let me get this right, the Reese Wesser in the wet try of the week. Yes. I just want to see what that is as an acronym. R-W-I-T-I-T-O-T-W. <laughs> Oh, we oh, might. Reese Wester, we'll tag you in this post. Yeah, you know, we'll see well, if you I reply. I'll, I'll do. I guess I can do a still yeah. image or something. Yeah, yeah, because we'd love we love you to get in contact with your Reese Wester because so, yeah, uh, an amazing try that time. Our R W I T O T W is the hammer try. Yes, that's what we're going with. You get to you Kyle get to felt, pick each Kyle week. felt very close behind with yeah. that try against the Raiders, but the hammer was just unbelievable. And yeah, you'll be picking that. Each hopefully, week. we get a better T-shirt next time. And we've... until we get a better T-shirt, you'll have to wear that one every week. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But yeah, the vintage thread. <laughs> <laughs> the vintage thread will get a, a, a Reese Wester in the wet try of the week. Shirt. I stuffed up with the tag. That's <laughs> the I stuffed up with it. I don't know. What's and the printer worse. wasn't bad. Like I don't know what was wrong with the printer. The colors like, like we'll the, cut this out. The photo's yellow. Yeah, We're not cutting this out. This yeah. is co- this I is printed it off. The printer doesn't seem to have the ink working properly because actually it was actually orange the the text pull it you gotta don't was keep actually, your jacket on zip you gotta keep that on for the rest of the show mate. this was actually he's orange. got it taped I don't can know what you happened. can you go and like go closer to the camera get up and go closer to the camera so the people can see it so my battery, stand in here stand in here don't, yeah <laughs> so we got our badly taped t-shirt here of our as you can see reese wester in the wet try of the week as you know on orange pillars that's our favorite i don't know if they can try <laughs> That's I really want like I'll get a photo of it and post it up on socials. <laughs> no, that could fix the tape first. That, no, that's no. good luck that and that'll be the cover Keep the jacket undone, Zane. No, no, no. Keep it undone. But the segment's over now, so we oh, move. that's gonna be like the cover photo of 
the Instagram post. What? Your shirt. Oh, God. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get into our round 16 preview, Zane. Brought to you by TBC Live. Mm. If you're going to... Oh, I'm yet to jump on yet. I probably should I, I actually highly it, recommend yeah. it. You should get into it. It's it's a good way of... I know the concept of it. You gotta it's a good way of being more engaged with the game. You can get in there and while the game's playing, you pretty much just jump on and you go... Predict, it can be predict you know, anything. Sharks like would be easy. Like Cameron McInnes to be in the next tackle. Like, yeah, no, like and, and it can be literally. You can jump on. You can say the Sharks to next time Nico Hines lines up a goal. Sharks fans do spirit fingers. That's a that's a prediction you can make. Yeah. If you were, I'm trying to think of like some like you can like I'm. It's hard to put into words what you can predict because yeah. you can predict. Anything. Yeah, so like saying, anything. I know the concept of it. So I'll, I'll get myself into it. Like this weekend, weekend, you can jump on and you can predict Matt Burden to score two tries. But you can you don't have to predict a thing that can happen at any moment in the game. You can predict things to happen in the next set, in the next three minutes, in the next 10 minutes, in the game. Just anything in any time frame. You can just predict anything. Like Latrell Mitchell to smile after his try. You can, like you that, can predict right? Latrell Mitchell to do a backflip after yeah, a sure. try. That one's a bit unlikely, but you know. You can, know. like if, if a set's about to happen, you can literally just go... The, the set to be completed or, you know, Matt Burden to touch the ball this set. Just any, I can't stress enough. You can predict anything. And the way it works is there's a prize each week for whoever gets the most correct pred- predictions, essentially, where you jump on in. The, so there's, you can win the game and you can win the round where if I jump on in the Titans Warriors game this week and I'm making predictions and you just make the most correct predictions. So you can do a bunch of little predictions you can do some big predictions. It's up to you. And yeah, you make predictions. Indeed. Everyone else does it. There's banner and you get involved and you can win prizes. So make sure if you want to be part of it, it's a really good way to just make watching the game a little bit more fun. Jump on TBC Live, hit the link in the description and yeah, get amongst it. I'm, me and Zane will be on there this weekend. Mm, we will. Which pick a game. Me and you will both be on there in a game. We do. Which one will be interesting? I'll Sound probably, probably, probably have to do... Probably have to do Titans Warriors. Yeah, that works. Because you'll be that's early Friday. Because you'll be there. Is that are they both that's Saturday? Friday. No. Ooh. What day is South? Ooh. I feel like they're Saturday night. I South. feel like we're both sun- uh, Saturday. That's yeah. why I'm like, we'll have to do. Let's do Sunday then. Nah, Titans Raiders. Do we want to? No, let's do oh. Titans Wars. Yeah, let's Titan- do Friday. That's Saturday 3 p.m. No, we can't. Friday Dolphin Storm oh. is what we're doing. All right, Dolphin perfect. Storm is the game we're doing. Dolphin that's Storm. probably going to be the best game of the round. So anyway. jump on TBC Live on Friday. Me and Zan will both be in there doing predictions every now and then. Start us off, Zane, before we get into the Dolphins. Actually, you know what? This is completely off the cuff. I'm changing our whole concept of this this thing now. So usually we do a score prediction. Yeah. Like usually we do a margin and a try scorer. You got to predict a moment, do you? Yeah. So now on, we're doing our tip and predict a moment. Are you happy with that? Yes. Change it up a little bit. Okay. So Let's do it. In this game, I'm tipping the Storm yep. to win 13 plus. No, you don't have to do okay. that anymore. Okay. Just, just well, you tip in a moment. Storm and yep. I'm going to predict. Oops, sorry guys. That far longo makes a line break and runs thirty meters. A far longo line break Not that leads. Score, but he makes a line break and he gain thirty meters before he gets tackled. Leads to okay. All right. That. Oh, and I, you said storm thirteen plus, and I was like, you can't do that. That can be a prediction if you want. To yeah. be fair, um, dolphin storm. For both players. Up, I feel like storm. <laughs> yes, they're about Harry Grant, but I still feel like they got enough to get. Job done over I'm gonna go Dolphins. Right. Oh, uh, who else are they? Hammer. Who are they missing to Origin? Missing Hammer, ha- Kafusi, got Trey Fuller. Um, who else would they be missing? I'm gonna go Dolphins. It's up in Queensland. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go Dolphins. Oh, is it at Suncorp though? Yeah, it is. No, nah, I'm going Storm at Suncorp. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, everyone. I'm gonna go Storm at Suncorp, but I'm gonna go for my prediction of anything. It's so hard because you can just predict anything. Anything can happen. Let's go. Let's go. Who's like in the heart? Let's go. I want to go like somebody's kick meters. Let's go. Who kick? I'm trying. Does who does the kicking for the Dolphins? Like far. Um, it is Cody. Nicole who does Rima. most of the kicking? Asako does the goal kicking, but it's usually in like play. Nicole Rima or Katoa. Let's go. Any kicker. Actually, let's go. No kicker to have more than 400 kicked meters. Yeah. Okay. Nobody to have 400 plus kicked meters. Okay. Is that even like like? I was gonna say, is like, is that even like an amount people normally get? It doesn't matter. You can predict whatever you want. Next one, Titans versus the Waz. Yep, talk to Ooh, me. I'm gonna go to the Waz in this game. I think they got a really good record on the Gold Coast, and I feel like the Titans are just in a bit of a rut at the moment. Like, yep. I feel like the Warriors looking to get some momentum. I think the Warriors win. Yep. I'm gonna say, 
It's hard on one the spot. Of, one of uh, someone in the Warriors back line will score a double. Okay. Not a hat trick. Not a more. Not four. A double. Two. Warriors back to Some. score a double. Yes. I like it. Exactly a double. Not anymore. I'm gonna go. Um, I accidentally wrote Titans. I'm going Wars. I'm going Warriors to win, and I'm gonna go Sean Johnson to step somebody, and it leads to a line break. Does that make sense? <laughs> it does, but. So very like. Actually, I'm pre- just going to go. It's a very precise. I'm going to go one, F- Sean Johnson to break somebody's ankles. Yeah, that's a very precise pr- prediction. Like, oh, it leads to a line break. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm I'm cutting the line break thing. I'm going to go Sean Johnson to break somebody's ankles. All right, Roosters Bulldogs. Talk to me. I'm going the dogs in this game. Although Roosters do have Tedesco playing, which is huge. In. I'm going dogs to win. It. And I'm going to say, ooh, what could happen in this game? I'm going to say... Oh, it's at Central Coast. You'll yeah. like a ball lands on, on yeah, the road. something like that could happen. I'm going to say... Ooh. Someone... One of the Roosters players off the bench will come off, like, onto the field and run over Reed Marnie. Wait, sorry. First hit Did you say Roosters or Bulldogs? Yeah. You said Roosters. No, I said Bulldogs to oh, win. Yeah. But I'm saying a Roosters forward will come off the bench and run over Reed Marnie in their first hit-up. A Roosters... In their first hit-up? Yes. Roosters Ford to steamroll Team Reed just came in out, first. Uh, all right, let's we'll power through. Power through. <laughs> they look a lot better this year, I can tell you. Um, I'm gonna I'll do the Bulldogs one as a closing segment. Souths because... is dry, great. Souths have a good side. All right, Zane. <laughs> speaking of Souths, Souths Manly. Well, I know the other night you were very confident in Manly to win this <laughs> yeah. game, but looking at the sides, Dry Graves replacing Trell. Yep. Then on the bench, Keon remains at lock, and LeBlanc is making his debut for South. LeBlanc, like the Friends character, like Matt, <laughs> like Matt LeBlanc. I I know this guy's name, but I can't pronounce it properly. Is that his? Is he? Is his last name LeBlanc? Yes. Like Matt LeBlanc, the Friends. Guy. Something like that. Yeah. Dun, 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 well, let's look dun, dun, at Manly's side. On the other hand, so South yeah. is Manly's side. One is Lahi Hopawati. Jason Sub, Tommy Taleo, and Cole are in the centre. That back line's not terrible. Aaron Schott making his debut. Carl Lawton, Luke Brooks in the halves. Then you go to their lock. they got Nathan Brown, Ben Trevojevic, and Corey Waddell on the edge. Sipley, Ethan Bullimore, and Jake Simpkin. Then you go to their bench, which is literally players I've never heard of. Yeah, right. I reckon South win this game. South win? Quite not having a trail. Yep. But they've got enough to get over him. And your prediction? My prediction is... Is that a manly de- debutant will score? How does that sound? As in yeah. uh, just debutant or including debutante. club debutant? No, just a debutant. So like yeah. they're playing their first game will score. To score in I'll the like second it. half. You don't start. have to get specific no, if you I'll don't get, want to. I'll get specific okay. in the second half when they probably come on and get their run at the okay. back end of the game when South have dominated and just let in a few. <laughs> All right, I'm going. I'm drops. going South as well after. Hearing just how many players Manly have out, I didn't realise it was that bad. It's like a whole different side. So I'm going south, and I'm going to go, for my prediction, both teams to miss a goal. That's easy, isn't it? Doesn't have to be hard. It's it's that easy, ladies. Oh, and for the Bulldogs game, I didn't even say. Bulldogs, I'm going doggies, obviously. And my prediction is Bulldogs to win 13+. plus. Very confident this week. Mm -hmm. And then the final game, Tigers-Raiders. You see, the Raiders have a history in destroying the Tigers, (laughs) but not as as of recent. Yeah. I'm going the Raiders to win and Ricky Stewart to complain in the press conference. I like it. Ricky Stewart to to complain. About something, even though they won. (laughs) Even though they won. Controversial call that he didn't like. (laughs) That's that's that'd be just give it to you right now. That's correct. Um, I'm going Raiders as well. And my prediction let's go I want to do something like kind of funny and creative. Where's it at, Campbelltown? Yeah. Probably. Um, let's just go Raiders and a ball goes into the crowd. Nice and simple. Because that's literally, it can be that easy. You can get on TBC Live and you can say a ball to go into the crowd in the next three minutes. Works. Simple as that. It that's works. all you have to do. Um, all right, Zane, let me look at the Bulldogs team list to wrap up the podcast. Let's, where are we? Because um, there's rumors like, is Kikau going to be back? How long um, is he out covering? for? How Kikau long is he? not named. 
That's that's a, yeah, in kick oh, out. He is at the bottom. So right. Skelton's coming on the wing, which I like. So Tracy Skelton's coming on the wing with Kraz to center to replace Critter. Bronson Wilson Burden at the six during Origin, so good. Sex sex season at Brandon halfback. Smith returns to the Roosters. Oh, that's big. Uh, Car- Josh Curran named at second row. You got Max King, Sam Hughes at props. Reed named captain as well. I like that. And yeah, Curran at lock at second row. He was in doubt because of his head injury. And yeah, Bailey Haywood at lock. He was also coming back from a head injury. And then Turpin, Poasa, Curtis Morant, and Lipoy. Lipoy, Hopoy. Yeah, Michael Anastar. Oh, Lock. And Hopoy. Turpin at 14. And then that means Kikau is in the extended squad in the 23 jersey. Mm. Just quietly, Filiama Kikau wearing 23 in. I am hoping they're going to wear their heritage jersey. But yeah, oh, they are or not. I reckon they will. I reckon they will. Um, and yeah, I, I think. I think kick out a player and then I'm just trying to look at who comes on who will he replace oh, Lepoy would go out wouldn't you Lepoy ho- yeah no nah, no nah, I reckon he'll hold his spot I reckon Poasa or Jake Turpin will come out mm. I'm trying to I swear there's oh Kurt Mann is out okay I reckon I reckon kick out comes in for Poasa if I'm a solid. there's no second rowers so yeah. that just doesn't make any sense I think I like I, I like Lepoy oh boy. Mm. he's a very good great name and very good player I will say, just looking at the Roosters side, Blake Steep named on the bench for the Roosters. He's also named to play in the under-19s origin on Thursday. Are they mm. expecting him to back up? Yeah, well. Two days later. Imagine that. Looks like, doesn't it? Are you, are you going to be watching that game before be, we wrap up? Yeah, probably. Any, I want to ask you, I'm, I'm throwing you under the bus here, Zane. Throwing you under the bus. But on the topic of the under-19s state of origin on Thursday night... Can you give me one player to look out for? I'll pull up the team list for you. Um, there might be a Souths player, we'll go you know. Blake Steep, just to be easy, because why not? How do you know Blake Steep? I don't know. I just I've heard his name before. That's why. Um, um, here, no, have a look at the team. Is there any? Is it no? Don't just pick one. Tell me, is there any Souths players here? Do you know, know. Souths juniors? I don't know. I assume so. Let's go with. Uh, let's go. I like that name. Let's go. Well, it's a pretty boring name. Noah Martin. Noah like Martin. I was looking for a quite unique. I feel name like here. he might be the brother of Miles Martin, who I played footy with. Yeah, we'll go Noah Martin. In under tens. Yeah. yeah, he's a good player. I'm <laughs> gonna. I'll give you an actual answer. I've got plenty, but Mitchell Woods. Yeah. Okay. Bulldogs also, halfback also coming a, through. Also a good player coming through. He's actually like. <laughs> he wouldn't be playing under nine. After the Bulldogs. Be, after the yeah. Like if, <laughs> if, he wasn't they, good, if yeah. they weren't good, they wouldn't be in this game. If. After the Bulldogs win the comp this year, our next premiership, Mitchell Woods will be our halfback. Okay. Clip that up. You heard it here first. Big fan. Also, I'm going to do a video on TikTok about it, but Chevy Stewart, I'm sure you've heard, heard of him. him. McLean's played McLean. first grade before. Yeah, he played for Panthers just yeah. the other week. And Casey, apparently, that's his brother, and apparently he's even better. Hayden Buchanan, Dragons Jr., very good. I'm Michael, sure I've heard that name before. You probably have. Michael Is Gabriel. Hayden? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Dragons junior, yeah. I oh, sorry, I know I've heard that name Maybe you before. went to school with him. No, I doubt it. And then Michael Gabriel used to play for the can Bulldogs. Very good. His, can you click on his profile, please? Yeah. Zane's now... He, he's, <laughs> don't want to change to Hayden Buchanan. He's younger than me. Jaring gone lines. 2006. Oh, we... Nah, cut the pot. We don't want to be oh, looking at this. That makes me. me feel old. Thanks uh, for what, let's try it. Thanks for like, watching. So, so he would have just turned eighteen then. Yeah, okay. Oh, that does that make you feel old or what? Oh, well, I've had enough. It's under nineteens. They're all that age. I feel sad that people my age are now like making their NRL debuts. But Bruh, they're yeah, all yeah, they're coming. all like three, four years. Younger I was, than me. Just remember the days when all the players Yuck. were so much older than me. Yeah. Now, people my age are NRL players. Matthew Arthur, that's um J- Jake Arthur's brother. Yeah. And then Fano Fano, I've got I've got his first name, son. but. Yeah, Seve, he's a Bulldogs junior, great player. And obviously, Blake Steep, probably the number one. He's, a, he's now an Orange Peelers legend, Blake Steep. All right, that'll do. Um, let's drop, baby. Go. Salute, Zane, please. Oh, yes. Thank you.